You're driving along, perfectly fine, everything is flowing well, and then all of a sudden you hit a point in the city where everything just slows down, and it's like bumper to bumper for the next 5 to 10 minutes. And you think to yourself, what the hell is causing this? Why is this portion of the city so bad? There's a particular uh, road here in Adelaide, which I hate traveling in uh, on, it's just always bumper to bumper, it seems. And now they've got roadworks happening. Uh, this, the, the, the road is called South Road. And if you get caught up like between 3 to 6 o'clock that, on that road, man, you might as well just turn back and head back to work and do a couple more hours and wait for the traffic to sort itself out. It's shocking. And I, the government's trying to kind of fix it, doing all these sorts of things and whatever, but... That is definitely one of the worst roads that you can travel on. And there are others, and I'm sure people around the world can attest to their uh, particular problems in, in, on the roads and traffic and particular spots in the city. But that's exactly what I think about. Same type of analogy when I think about certain movements that we do in the gym. Where is the bottleneck? What is causing the problem? You can add 16 damn lanes to the road, wherever the hell you want, but if you are not addressing that point where everything gets clogged up, you are not going to fix the problem. You know, adding muscle, adding size to a part of the body where you are really strong is not going to fix the bottleneck. For me, when we're talking about the deadlift, I struggle off the floor. I struggle off the floor. And now, what the hell is causing that struggle? Why am I struggling off the floor? Because the moment the bar starts moving, I feel like it's a joke. It's just so much excess power in different portions of the lift that it's like, I feel like sometimes that all, everything that I do, I'm just adding more and more lanes in, in the, the city where I don't really need it. The problem is still the problem. The bottleneck is still caused at a, a particular point. So, you know, you, you can think about any freaking genre of, of, of problem solving you want from traffic to weightlifting to medicine to, to flow of patients through an emergency department, right? Where is the trouble? What are we doing here? And over the years, man, like I've, I've seen different management, different ideas to come in and fix things. And I feel like they're just a sidestepping. They're not really addressing the problem. Uh, kind of like me, man. Like I feel like I'm sidestepping in a lot of these years that I've trained because I have not identified the bottleneck. And all, some of us are going to have similar bottlenecks, right? Because our leverages. I've got these short ass arms and long ass legs, right? Short torso. And so whatever I do, like I'm going to struggle off the floor. So what is it about off the floor strength in that type of setting that's going to make it easier for me? Today I hit 240 and I kind of feel tired from you know everything that I've done this week. But I felt like the, the floor clearance was quite well. Like I, I felt like I got it off the floor relatively easily, right? Sometimes it's so hard initially and then I just pull it at the top. But today I felt like it, was, it kind of popped off the floor. I was, I was quite happy with it. So here I am sitting and thinking, what's caused that little bit of an improvement? Is it the upper back work? Is it the quad work that I recently did with the belt squat machine? Is it the abs? Is it all the planks and sit-ups that I've been doing? Which one of these things is going to contribute most? Could be all of them. Could be a combination of two of them. Could be a combination of three of them. Or could be just one of them. 
But this is something that you trial and error, right? You come in with your bulldozers, you, you knock down certain things. Maybe you had a traffic light here, a water lane here, maybe a slip lane here. Maybe you do this, you do that. Maybe the problem is really the street, a couple, uh, couple of streets over. That's what the problem is. People need another, another route around this particular part. That's what it's about. Uh, I did quads once uh, with the belt squat machine. I'm kind of feeling like the way I walk is different. I'm extremely sore still through the medialis and the lateralis mostly. The rectus femoris is a little bit sore from the sit-ups yesterday, but the, the, the medial and the lateral portions of the quad are really the, the ones that are sore from the belt squat. Come in today and I'm like, damn, I feel kind of like strong in the bottom position. Even though I'm systemically feeling weak, I felt strong in that portion. And that's kind of interesting to me. Interesting to me because that's improving the flow of traffic, the flow of patients. It's improving it. Hmm, what's really causing it? And sometimes you think to yourself, oh, I just had more lanes in this particular area, right? Or whatever. It might, you know, I mean, some, some problems are easy to solve. Others are not so simple and you have to kind of peel back the layers a little bit deeper to kind of work out what's really happening at certain parts of the problem. Uh, and I've certainly done my fair share of experimenting, running around, and I've always kind of looked for patterns between the squat and the deadlift and other movements you know, maybe some of these weaknesses are going to show their head in other forms of movement, right? Uh, but I think that's what it's about. Honestly, I think that's what it's about because I think I look at people in the gym who are lifting and, 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 and whatnot. I always think to myself, is this really what you need to be doing right now? This is a thought that crosses my mind often, you know. It's all well and good to work hard and feel like you're working hard. That That's an important element to me in my mental health and my stress relief in life and how I, you know, look at life happily and whatnot, like that act of working hard helps me. Uh, so I need to do that. But what if you acted or, or you trained really hard in the right area, where exactly where you're weak? Isn't that a beautiful thing? You can work hard and improve yourself at the same time. Uh, you know, this is something that was on my mind ever since I pulled out 240. I mean, 240 is still far away from my max, but you know, I know, you know, how 240 usually feels. And today it felt a little bit different. So I'm sitting here analyzing and what's really going on. I mean, from what I understand, uh, those three things that I listed, the quads, the core and the upper back, they all have a relationship there. Uh, I mean, I want to say the core is probably the most important in that position because you're kind of most flexed. But then I'm also thinking, well, look, the upper back is keeping your shoulder girdle, you know, locked in and, you know, bleeding power through there. But at the same time, maybe the quads also have something to do with it. I mean, you know, the, the angle and, and, and let's say the duration of quad effect in a deadlift is very, very, I want to say, uh, short lived. But it's, it's an important thing. It kind of breaks the ice and makes everything go from there. Uh, if you are initiating the deadlift and it's all hamstring from the get-go, it's hard, man. Like, I don't know. It ends up being just a hip hinge. And that's not what a deadlift is. A deadlift is a push first, and then it gets into a pull. And if you're pulling from day one, from, from moment one, yeah, man, it's going to be a struggle. Dude. You're going to be blue in the face by the time you get to the top. Uh, it's kind of really, really hard. Uh, so I think it's best served, even for guys like me, to just bias your positioning in such a way where you can get everything you can out of out of those squads. And then after you've initiated the pull, then you can transition into something that you're kind of really good at, which is the, the hamstrings, the glutes and whatnot. Uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned in the past, so I started this year, when I was doing all those crazy reps with bodyweight squats and push-ups and dips and whatnot, you know, there was a time where I tried to do well, I tried miserably, failed, but I tried to do a thousand sit-ups in a day. And I, I spread that thing around all th throughout the day and I couldn't get it. You know, I think I got to like 500, I think, uh, one day. And that literally wiped me out so severely that I could not squat or deadlift for like close to a week afterwards. Uh, that is something that I'm extremely weak at. And then I, then I see other people online or otherwise we can just knock out sit-ups like they're nothing. And I'm like, God damn, man. I wonder if my inability to do what they do is also one of the common threads when it comes to my anterior pelvic tilt, 
my struggle in the squat and mid-range, and my struggle in the deadlift of the floor. I wonder if that's a link. That's how I always think about it, man. I'm like, is that the link? Is this exercise, you know, what I need to work on? Like, if you, if you get all of the exercises that you've done in your life, right, and you put them up on a, on a horizontal line, and a graph, right? There's a vertical line, there's a horizontal line. The vertical line is, you know, how elite you are or how proficient you are in the movement. Let's say one, two, three, four, five level. And then you put all of the, the, the crap that you can do, you know, uh, from squats to push-ups, sit-ups to sleds, whatever. You put all of the exercises on there. And then you grade these exercises one by one. Okay, I reckon I'm one in sit-ups. I reckon I'm a three in, or four in squats, right? If you just look at the average person, right average person because that's sometimes really good to you know measure yourself against right okay so let's say my squats are a five my deadlifts are a five if i'm looking at the average guy who doesn't really train that hard right some of these average people can do a thousand damn sit-ups now that is a problem to me man because i am devoting a lot of time into this training business and here is a regular joe blow who can do more sit-ups than me that doesn't sit well with me man i should be better than you know than him at all these levels and this is something that I alluded to a few, a few uh, days ago. You know, I looked up how long should a man plank, right? Simple like that. I wanted to see the strength standards. They're like between 30 and 60 seconds, it's a beginner. Beginner. Elite level is like five minutes. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, five minutes. But if you type in, you know, how much should a male squat? Boom. Like my 210 kilo squat is like way, 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 way higher than any of these string, uh, uh, standards, right? But those same standards are making me a beginner in sit-ups. So one hand, I'm really good at squats. One, you know, in deadlifts, I'm really, really poor at planks and, and sit-ups. So that's a problem. I am below average in sit-ups. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm just posing the question out there. Maybe this is something I should work on. Maybe this is where the flow of traffic is stopping. All of these gains that want to come into my life are being bottlenecked by this damn thing here. Sit-ups. Planks. That's the problem. Let's say upper back. How many pull-ups can you do? A few of the fellas uh, uh, that I was talking to today, uh, the gym, you know, I did a set of pull-ups and a fella came up to me and was like, man, how many can you do? What, like, what's your best? I'm like, I'm doing five sets of 10 at the moment, but I'm, I'm you know, I've, I used to be better, but I'm long, long, you know, way away from my best. Uh, but, you know, five sets of 10 is going to test me. I said, how many can you do? He's like, I could probably get 15, 20. Uh, and I was like, well, that's impressive. Now he's much lighter and I'm much heavier and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot that goes into it. But the point is, is like, well, I'm not very good at pull-ups either now. I'm not very good at pu uh, pull-ups. Hmm, does that contribute to my shittiness off the floor in the deadlift? Could be, could be not. But this is what I'm talking about. If you get all of these, you know, uh, exercises that people do, you know, in the fitness world and you start grading yourself, you might find somewhere something that is embarrassingly really weak for somebody that trains 15, 20 hours a week or whatever. Maybe not that much hour. That's, that's a lot of freaking hours. Let's say 10 hours a week. You train 10 hours a week and you have this glaring weakness in a particular thing. Now, obviously, to be... You know, a jack of all trades is very, very hard, but I, I'm still standing by the fact that you should be better than the average bloke who doesn't even train that much. I should be able to plank more. I should be able to do more pull-ups than a guy that doesn't do even train. So there's like a, you know, basic level of, of strength and fitness and conditioning that you should have. Um, and maybe this is just a, a nice little lens to look through to, to kind of work out or to help you search for these weaknesses that you might have. And, you know, sometimes... Zooming in is, is a really, really difficult process uh, to undertake to work out your weaknesses. Sometimes zooming out is a little bit better. And that's what I'm talking about with the whole graph thing. You zoom out and see what is an average guy can do. How much can you plank usually? The average guy, like, you know, some guy that's been training for like a month. You reckon he can do two minutes? Well, that's a problem, dude. I've been training for 10 years and I can't get one and a half minutes. That's a problem. That's a weakness. That's something to, you know, work on. And that's kind of how I am thinking about this right now. There's a bottleneck in all of our lives. There's a bottleneck in all of our progress. We just have to identify it. And once you identify it, then it's like the whole step load function, right? You just end up going another level. You just end up going to another level because you've worked out the weakest link. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it might be the wrong way to think about it, but it's another little way for me to, you know, attack the problem. 
Because certainly today felt odd. It felt different. I felt like I had, I don't know, I felt like I had more push off the floor. And that to me is like, wow, okay, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> that's kind of nice. That's really nice. So if, if I was pushing hard today, I reckon I could push off the floor a little bit more. And I know if I can push off the floor more, that initial couple of centimeters, and I can push off the floor and without compromising my lower back, or now I've got a really good chance of, you know, uh, finishing, finishing this off. Because a lot of times when I really want to push max weight, I lose positioning in the bottom, and then it's, it gets worse and worse as it goes along. But if I can pull from the floor, maintain that core stability and, and, and positioning, then the top is easy, man. It's easy. Nothing to talk about. Just finish it up. But then there's guys on the other spectrum who have really long arms, I suppose, and they struggle at the top. They have a different bottleneck. Maybe it's down the street somewhere. Maybe they need more glutes. Ah, they just do more squats. Sometimes I, uh, <laughs> sometimes I think to myself, man, I wish I had long arms and had that problem because you know, all these problems that are, that are associated with top end, you know, lockout, all you got to do is squat, man. <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's what it seems like to me. All you got to do, man, is just do more squats. And that's something I love to do and it would be an easy problem for me to fix. No, 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 no. The guy that loves to squat is going to have different problems, of course. And that's how it works. The guy that loves to deadlift is going to be really strong off the floor, weak at the top, let's say. But the guy that loves to squat is going to have an easy time at the top and struggle off the floor. So it's kind of like, it's one of these things, man. You end up always opposite where you want to be. Uh... But, you know, that's why I kind of have an affinity to people when I watch people deadlift and they just boom off the floor, just like a, like a freaking rocket coming off the floor, you know, and then it slows at the top. And I'm always like, what, why is it slowing at the top? That's weird. And I, and I kind of get attracted to the idea of like blowing up off the floor like that. Like, wow, like what are you doing to generate that much damn speed off the floor? To me, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and I reckon the, the reason why it's beautiful to me is because I don't have it. It's kind of like seeing a Lambo drive by. You're like, damn, that's a beautiful thing. Why is that a beautiful thing? Well, because not a lot of people have Lambos and I kind of want a Lambo. But if there was Lambos everywhere, we're all driving a Lambo and you see a Corolla, you're like, wow, that's a nice piece of freaking machinery right there. Look at that Corolla, man. It's all, you know, nice and accessible with four doors and you can drive from here to Melbourne on one tank. Isn't that sexy? Look at this piece of shit, V12. I can go to 100Ks down the road and I got to refill again, right? That's how it is, man. Anyway. Appreciate you guys, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.